So for today, we will just continue our discussion of the chain rule of differentiation. So we will just have more examples. So let's start. First is we have h of x equals logarithm of sine of x over x squared plus 1 base 3. So first is we have to look at this um, function and check how many terms are there. So obviously, in this function, the whole h of x itself, there's only one function, which is the logarithm. So we have to check now that function. And looking at the logarithm, there is still a function within that function, which is this one, sine of x all over x squared plus 1. So that means we have a composite function because there is still a function within a function. So it means we will be using the chain rule. And this expression right here will be our inner function. So we will set that as our u. So sine of x over x squared plus 1. And then we will rewrite this function into logarithm of u base 3. And then from here, we will now apply the chain rule. So the concept of the chain rule is that you get the derivative of the whole function. So derivative d over du derivative of the whole function logarithm of u base 3 times the derivative of its inner uh, function which is sine of x over x squared plus 1. Now let's get the derivatives. So here we have the logarithm of u base 3 that is 1 over u ln of 3. And then here looking at our inner term you will see that there are two terms, sine of x and x squared plus 1, and then they are separated by division. It means that we have to use the quotient rule for our derivative of inner function. So here, we will set this as our high, this is the low. And then, again, we will be applying our quotient rule. So here we have low squared. So here we have low d high. minus high d low all over low squared which is this one there and then we'll just continue solving this so we have 1 over u ln of 3 times and then here we have so x squared plus 1 is still the same and then we get the derivative of sine, that is cosine of x, minus, then this one is sine of x, derivative of d over dx, that is 2x, or that means, or I mean the derivative of x squared plus 1, so that is 2x, all over, again, our um, denominator, x squared plus 1 squared. So there. So we're able to get the derivatives using the quotient rule. Now, we will just simplify this. So we have these two terms. So we just have to multiply numerator to numerator, denominator to denominator. Since in our numerator, it's just 1 times the other one. So it will be just the same for the denominator. Just going to multiply the two denominators. So let's write here. Our numerator is x squared plus 1 cosine of x minus, and then let's just rewrite this one as 2x sine of x. So minus 2x sine of x all over, then we have to multiply the denominators. So you have u ln of 3 times the x squared plus 1 squared. And then, let's substitute back the value of u. So we have x squared plus 1. So the numerator is just the same. Our u is sine x or sine of x over x squared plus 1. And then it's multiplied to ln of 3. So let's just write ln of 3 here. And it's also multiplied to x squared plus 1 squared. Now from here, you will see that there's a fraction within a fraction, but looking at our denominator, it's the same as this one. 
So it means we can cancel out because one is on the numerator, the other one is on the denominator, and then they they are just multiplied together. So we can cancel this one out. So we will be left with. So this one, the numerator is just the same. All over, and then for our denominator, it's sine of x, ln of three. And then the remaining one, x squared plus 1. And then that's it. This is now our final answer. So that is how we solve for the derivative of our function. So first, we use the chain rule. And we apply the quotient rule since the inner function is still differentiable using the quotient rule. Okay, next example. Let's say we have f of x equals cosine of e raised to 2x. So here we also have another or one function here, which is the cosine. And then in this function, we can see that there is another function, which is e raised to 2x. So that will be our inner function, e raised to 2x. So we can rewrite this as cosine of u. And then we can now use our chain rule. So f prime of x is equal to get the derivative of the whole function cosine of u, multiply it to the derivative of our inner function, which is e raised to 2x. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine of u times, and then here you will see that our inner function is still a composite function. So we have e as our function, and then we have 2x as our inner function. So that means we have to use again the chain rule here. So we will use another variable, which is let's say v, that will be our 2x, and we can rewrite this as e raised to v. Okay, now let's apply again the chain rule, get the derivative of the whole function, which is e raised to v, multiply it to the derivative of the inner function, which is in this case is 2x. And then just get the derivative, so negative sine of u times e raised to v is just e raised to v. Derivative of 2 is 2. And then all you have to do is just to simplify this, we have negative 2 e raised to 7 sine of u. And then lastly, just substitute it back to the values. So we have negative 2 e raised to v, which is 2x times the sine of u. So our u is e raised to 2x. So here is our final answer. And for our last example, so let's say we have f of x equals e raised to secant of pi x cubed minus pi. So here again, we have one function or one term present in f of x and that is the e, the function of e. And then within that function, we still have another one, which is the exponent, secant of pi x cubed minus pi, or inner function. So secant of pi x cubed minus pi. So this will become e raised to u. So let's now get a derivative. So we will just apply the chain rule so f prime of x is equal to get the derivative of the whole function e raised to u multiply it to the derivative of our inner function which is secant of pi x cubed minus pi so the derivative of e raised to u is just e raised to u times here as you can see again our inner function is still a composite function that means we have to apply again the chain rule so our outer function here is the secant and then the inner function is this one the pi x cubed minus pi so we will set that as another variable so v is now equal to pi x cubed minus pi so this function here will become secant of v and then we will apply the chain rule so get the derivative of the whole function secant of v times then the derivative of our inner function which is pi x cubed minus pi so here we have e raised to u times secant of v 
This one is secant of v tangent of v. So that's the derivative. And then for this, you will for the first one, pi x cube, you take pi as like uh, the numerical coefficient of x cube. So you just have to apply the power rule here. So it will become 3 pi x squared. Again, you treat pi as a constant or the numerical coefficient of x cubed and then just apply the power rule and then for the other one minus pi so this is again constant because it has a value so its derivative is zero and then all we have to do is just to write this as 3 pi x squared times e raised to u times secant of v tangent of v and then lastly let's just rewrite everything back so we have 3 pi x squared e raised to u our u is secant of pi x cube minus pi times the secant of v that is pi x cube minus pi tangent of v pi x cube minus pi and then that's it this is now our final answer so just remember when are we going to use chain rule so as long as you can see that the function that you're going to derive is still a composite function so that means we still have to use our chain rule especially if the inner function is still a composite function so we have to use the chain rule there so that's it for today. I hope you learned something about the chain rule, how to apply chain rule, uh, what are the things that we have to consider whenever we encounter problems like this, such as composite functions, and see you next time. So we will set that as our u or